takes only five simple ingredients to make my family's authentic homemade pita bread recipe. Honestly, pita is the easiest bread to make at home. I bet you have all these ingredients in your pantry. We have flour, yeast, olive oil, a pinch of sugar, and some lukewarm water. How easy can this be? So we're gonna get right into it. So we start with one cup lukewarm water going right in here. We are making the sponge for the pita. Then we're gonna stir in our yeast and just a half a teaspoon of sugar. So we're gonna stir until our yeast has dissolved. There is nothing better than fresh homemade bread and pita, especially, at least according to me. Okay, so we're gonna go in with half a cup all-purpose flour going right in here. And we're gonna whisk this party together, super easy. So far, so good. We're whisking and we're seeing some bubbles. And now all we have to do is place this in a warm place for just about 15 minutes or so. We're looking for a loose sponge. So I have warmed my oven and the oven is now off. I'm gonna leave this in there. Okay, so now we have what we call a sponge. It's basically the pre-ferment and it's a starter dough. Basically, we're looking for a loose looking dough situation. So here you go. We added a half a cup of our flour to the water with the yeast and a little bit of sugar. And that's what we did here to create the sponge. So now we're gonna actually build the pita bread dough. All right, we're gonna do one teaspoon kosher salt right here, and then a couple tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. I wanna eyeball it, but when it comes to baking, it's safer to measure. So two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. I'm using a fruity extra virgin olive oil that's not too peppery in flavor. When it comes to baking, that's probably a good idea here. I don't wanna alter the flavor of the pita too much. You wanna enhance it though. We need two cups now of all-purpose flour going right in here. Very easy, simple ingredients. The easiest bread to make at home is pita bread. We're gonna stir until the mixture gives us sort of a shaggy dough or a shaggy mass. It is happening, it's doing it. My mama would be so proud. <laughs> okay, see this is what a shaggy mass is. It's like, kind of like, uh, what do you call it, Drew? What do you think? A shag carpet. A shag carpet, yeah. Shag carpet. Thanks, Thank Drew. You. What you're looking for at this point is a sticky mess that kind of pulls apart. There's barely any gluten in it yet, which is why we need our bread. Need, not need, but need. <laughs> at this point, I'm just gonna use my hand, grab a little bit of flour, and I'm going to incorporate this flour in here, and I'm gonna knead my dough for about a minute to get that gluten going right here in my bowl. Just feel the dough in your hand. It should be really smooth at some point. So you're gonna keep at it until you get to a place where the dough is not too shaggy anymore. Because I grew up on pita bread in Egypt, in Port Said, Egypt, and I wrote about this in my cookbook, it really does take me back when my dad would take me to what we called a forn, which is uh, a big community bakery. So we'd stand in line and we'd see them kind of throwing the dough, kneading it like, and you walk away in like five minutes with the best puffy pillowy pita. And making pita at home is the closest thing I can get to the pita bread I grew up with. So this is looking better. You're gonna dust your clean surface here and you're gonna take the dough to it. You're gonna push this out of the way for now. And you're gonna knead for a good 10 minutes. Someone is gonna say, can I just use my stand mixer? You sure can, but I am old school and this is fun to do. So just go ahead and knead until it's smooth. Still trying to develop our gluten and I'm looking for it to be nice and smooth at this point. If it becomes too sticky while you're working with it, you just grab a tiny bit of the flour, coat your dough and then keep kneading. All right, at this point, we're gonna let the dough rest for 10 minutes. We're just gonna cover it and leave it alone, giving that gluten some time to work. Let's see, looking good. 
and we're gonna knead it for a couple more minutes. Oh yeah, it's starting to get pillowy. I love the feeling of pillowy dough. I don't know about you, but it's so good. <laughs> it feels nice. Pita bread is an ancient bread that dates back like thousands of years. And the word pita, if you guys didn't know, comes from the Greek. It really does mean flat. It also means pie, but Middle Eastern pita is different than Greek pita in that the pita I grew up with in Egypt makes pockets, pita pockets, which is what I love about it. Dough's coming together super nicely at this point. And now you grab your cleaned bowl at this point. You're gonna add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, the good stuff, and we're gonna coat the bowl with it. Grab your pita dough, turn it around a little bit so that you're coating the, the dough with the olive oil. Very nice, very nice. Allow the dough to rest for an hour, but first we've gotta cover this. We've gotta make a secure environment for our dough and we wanna leave it in a warm place. So first, you're gonna cover your bowl with plastic wrap tightly. Contain the environment, so important. You're gonna add your towel on top of this and you're gonna leave it in a warm place for one hour. Okay. This is my favorite part of baking any bread. Ah! <laughs> so fun. We're gonna collect the dough. So I'm gonna divide the dough into equal pieces. Sometimes I go for six, sometimes I do eight. It depends how large of a pita you want. So we're going for six. It'll give me a good size pita here. Form them into a ball like so. And because I use some olive oil, it's nice and easy to do this. All right, so once you have the balls, we're gonna cover and let them go for a quick rise, about 10 minutes or so. Then I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can cook or bake your pita in the oven and on the stovetop. No special gadgets required, so stick with it. All right, these are looking good. We're gonna work with one at a time. So just keep them covered as you do that. Flour on your rolling pin. And then we're gonna roll it out to about an eight to nine inch disc. If the dough kinda shrinks back, it's because of the gluten, so you're just gonna have to be patient and work with it. They're very pillowy, which is like what you get out of homemade pita versus what you might buy at the store. And sometimes it helps to kinda just Work it this way. This looks good. And then we're gonna cook it up on the stove top in a skillet. So you drizzle a little bit of olive oil in your pan and you just wipe off the excess. And then you warm your pan over medium high heat until it's nice and hot. Going in. And you're gonna wait for some bubbles to form. Oh, oh, look at that, Drew. Check the bubbles out. It's happening, Christina, it's happening, look. I'm sensing the bubbling action. So I'm gonna see here what we look like on the bottom. You should easily be able to slide your spatula. See, like that. Boom. Yeah. One to two minutes per side. What you want to see is the pita kind of rising and that is what's gonna create the pocket for you. Sometimes we get lucky and it puffs up real nice. Sometimes we don't absolutely fine. This is a pillowy pita, nice and squishy. I can't wait. If you're gonna do the oven method, make sure you have something heavy duty because you're gonna preheat your skillet. So go ahead and put that in. We're going in a couple minutes. Warm and pillowy pita, just how I love it. Ooh, yeah, baby. I'm gonna just have some while it's nice and warm. I'm gonna dip it in my olive oil. Now this is a pocket. Taste it with a little bit of my favorite olive oil. Mm. Homemade bread is amazing, but homemade pita is so special because you can't find it in the grocery store. It won't taste as good. Mm. 
Now that you've made pita, you have so many ways to use it, especially shawarma. You can do so many different things with it, but definitely try my chicken shawarma sandwiches. So good. Find the recipe for homemade pita bread over on themediterraneandish.com. I will see you later. Ciao.